Happy 2023. Happy first anniversary. Thank you to everyone supporting Smart Together. Wish you 365 days of joy, happiness, health and success. Before we start, please click subscribe and turn on the notification to avoid missing valuable videos. Also, feel free to drop a comment to provide feedback, ask questions or let me know if there are any Excel, Power Query, Power Pivot or Power BI topics you're interested in. Today's topic is about month-on-month -month and year-on-year -year changes in percentages. We have sales data with four columns, sales channel, period, financial year and monthly sales amount. We were asked to add two additional columns. One column shows the percentage of changes to the previous month, and another column shows the percentage of changes to the same month of the last year. Let's get started. I want to show you two methods today, no code, and M code. Duplicate the query by holding the Ctrl plus C, then Ctrl plus V rename the duplicated query to method 1. We will get the month on month percentage and then year on year. The very first step is to two index columns, one start from 0 and the second one start from 1. Those two index columns are helper columns. Before you add those columns, you need to ensure the period column is sorted, in newest to oldest order, and grouped by the sales channel. The next step is using the merge queries function to self-merge. So, what are we merging? The top is our main table, and the bottom is our lookup table. Say we're in August, and the unique identifier for this row is the sales channel and the row index. We're looking for the previous month from the lookup table. The unique identifier is the same as the August month in the main table. Let's select all the key columns to do the self-merge. Select Sales, and then click OK to expand the column. Now we get the previous month's sales value. Select both sales columns. Then go to the Add Column tab, click on the Standard, and select the Divide function. You now get a column that divides the current month's sales by the previous month's sales. To finish the whole calculation, go to the Transform tab. Then click on the Standard and select the Subtract function. We want to take one off from each value. Rename the column to month on month, then delete the helper columns. Awesome! We completed the month on month column. The year on year is much simpler. First, select the period column, then go to the add column tab. Click on the standard and select the subtract function. We want to take 100 off from each period, which will give you the value of the same period last year. We can now start the self-merging process as we did for the month-on-month -month column. Select the unique identifiers, then click OK. Expand the column by selecting only the sale column. Select both of the sales columns. Go to the Add Column tab, click on the Standard and select the Divide function. Then go to the Transform tab, click on the Standard and select the Subtract function to take one off each value. Rename the column to Year on Year. Then delete the helper columns. Hooray! Here is how you create the month on month and year on year in the no code method in Power Query. Let's get on to the second method. Duplicate the sales data query and rename it to method 2. Add a custom step and name it search list. Clear the highlighted code in the formula bar. We need to create a search list, and the list has to be unique. Combining the sales channel with the period should give us a unique list. I am showing you nested let expression in this method. A let expression includes two keywords, let and in. The syntax starts with let, which says that let's do something and ends with an in to generate the output. Write the first keyword, let in the formula bar. Name the first step table to list and follow it with the table to row function. This function will turn each row into a list. The syntax is argument says table, and the previous step is the table. Finish the syntax with a keyword, in and the output step, that's the table to list step in this case. Click on the first sub list to preview it. Each row is now converted into lists. We want to combine the first two items on the list. Edit the formula. Add a comma, hold shift plus enter to start from the new line. Name the second step, first two. Then add the list transform function to transform the converted list. 
Use the list first end function to select the first two items. Update the highlighted output step to the first two step. You should have now selected the first two. The next step is to combine them, but we will encounter a problem here. The period's data type is a number type. We can't combine non-text. Add a new step, and name it to text. Again, if we need to make changes to the list, we need the list transform function. Because we're transforming a sublist, we need to add a nested list transform function. To convert to text, we use the text from function. Because it is a bulk transform, we can skip the keyword, each. Update the output step, refer to the to text step. It looks like nothing has changed. In fact, the data type is now converted. Go to the output step and add the list transform function. You can also write functions at the output step. Use the text combine function to combine text. We now have a unique identifier as a search list. The next is to add a custom step to get the month on month changes. Rename the step to month on month. Manually type in the table add column function. This function is generated when you use the add custom column function. Name the column, month on month. We want to write the nested let expression. Name the first step, get key. In the table add column function, we point it to the change type step. Here is the output view of the change type step, and we are adding the month on month column. We want to concatenate the sales channel and the period columns. Again, we need the text from function to convert the number to text to concatenate text. Before finishing off the text from function, we need to the period minus 1 to get the last period. Close the let expression in the get key step for now. The unique identifier column is now added. We have a challenge here where you take January minus 1, you get 0 instead of 12. We need to add a conditional statement. If the period ends with 0 1, we need the help of text ends with and text from functions. Copy the highlighted code and paste it between then and else. If it is January, instead of minus 1, we want to minus 89. This is how we get 89. Else, we minus 1. Problem solved. Add a new step and name it get position. We need the list position of function to help us find the key identifies position from the search list. Update the output step. You should get the position as a result. You will get minus 1 if not found. Add the next step, get last month. We want to use the usual referencing method that I covered in another video. Refer to the change type step, sales column, and the row index is the result from the get position step. Update the output step. You will get errors for not found items. Resolve the challenge with try otherwise. Drop me a message in the comment area and let me know in the comment if you guys want me to create a video focusing purely on error handling. We can now add the last step, result. The calculation for the result is sales divide the last month sales minus 1. Lastly, update the output step. You can add the data type to the last argument of the table add column function. The month on month column is now added. Let's add the last custom step for year on year. This step is super easy because we have already done the hard work in the previous step. Go to the previous step, copy all the code, and paste them into the current step. Rename the month on month column name to year on year. Then update the previous step name to the month on month step. The highlighted code is the conditional statement for month on month. We don't need it in this case. Delete it. Update the minus 1 to 100. We are now completed. Isn't it easy? One suggestion for PAL BI users. Writing DAX the month on month and year on year calculation is highly recommended instead of Power Query. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video.